So today we're doing a oil change and general inspection on a Ford F-250. So uh, we've already got the hood up and we'll go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is, as soon as you open up the hood, you want to take a look at the engine bay in general, see if anything looks out of place. Um, look over the wiring, make sure there's no exposed wiring. Look for any obvious leaks. And in this case, everything looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and give you a look at that engine bay. Okay, so before you move on to checking all of your fluids, it's good to check your belts and your fan. And all you need to do there, at least for now, is just a quick visual inspection. Make sure that the belts look good, they're not cracked underneath, and that the fan looks good, there's no chips or cracks. All right, now we're going to go ahead and inspect our battery terminals. Remember, you never want to touch a live terminal, so we're just going to go ahead and remove the boot and take a look. And this one, uh, we can tell, has had some corrosion, but it looks pretty good. And the battery cable, again, has had some corrosion, but it looks good right now. They're both secure, and we can move on to the next battery. And it looks good. Wire looks good. Everything's tight there. Check one more. And both batteries look good. Okay, now we're going to move on to checking all of our fluids. So I'm going to start back here with the brake fluid and take a look in here and make sure that we're at the right level. I like to shake it a little bit to make sure that I'm getting a good reading. Sometimes you'll develop a little bit of color on the inside of the container. You can't tell what the real fluid level is. But if you shake it a little bit and that line moves, then you can be sure you're getting an accurate reading. Again, you want to look in here and just make sure it's the right color. And uh, this one looks like it is. It may be getting a little bit dark, so we'll make a note of that, but it's still good. All right, so now we're going to move right along to the power steering fluid. And right now this engine is cold, so we are going to go ahead and reach down and take that power steering cap off. And we'll check for color. And that color is nice and bright. That looks good. Clean it off a little bit. Notice that your dipstick has a hot side and a cold side. So right now we're going to be looking at the cold side. We'll go ahead and replace the dipstick, get a reading, go ahead and pull it out, and you can see we're in a normal range, right at the full side, so that's perfect. You can check your coolant really easily, the level, right here, and again I like to shake these down just to make sure that that's actually the coolant level and not just a stain on the inside of the container. Now this engine is cold, you don't want to remove this cap when it's hot. So I've double checked that it's cold and we're going to go ahead and take the cap off. And what I'm doing here is just looking at the inside seal on this radiator cap to make sure that it's still good. It looks good, there's no tears or cracks. So I can go ahead and replace that. You'll note that the, the uh, color of the coolant looks good. And that's good, we can move right on to engine oil. So we'll go ahead and pull the dipstick. And the first time you pull the dipstick, it's a good idea to just wipe it down. Ignore that reading, because there's going to be a lot of extra oil that's splashed up on the dipstick. This is a good time to check the color of the oil. As you can see, this oil is getting close to completely used up. Nice and dirty, still has some life to it, and that's a good thing. We don't want to go all the way until it's useless. So we'll go ahead and replace the dipstick. Now we can get a good clean reading off of that stick. It's worth making note of how much oil is in the motor before you change the oil. As you can see, it's just a little bit low. But that's just one more opportunity to check if we're leaking or burning any oil. Now that we have the engine running, we can get a more accurate reading of the transmission fluid level. Now the reason that we do this is that the uh, transmission fluid level is different while the pump is running inside of the transmission, so you'll get a significantly different reading. It's a little tricky to read, but it looks like we're about halfway through this second tier. So we'll go ahead and clean it and reinsert it.